tomorrow morning. Uh, Roger doesn't know about this yet, but it, it ties into some news that's already here in front of us uh, from Breitbart. Uh, I want to get his take on a big breaking story we've got about Hillary and her warmongering and working with Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Islamic State. Uh, Breitbart's kind of got a smell of this early. Hillary Clinton sponsored Secret of Arid Spring program that destabilized the Middle East. So I'll get Roger's take on this once. I can show him the article tomorrow. It'll be up at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time when Paul Watson, who just finished it today, posted. Uh, so much to cover. So much to break down. Uh, Roger, I've got a stack of polls here showing Trump continuing to surge. But then I've got mainstream articles about dead voters voting in Colorado where he's surging. We haven't talked in a few days. So I don't know what's front and center for you. Uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, master of the dark art of telling the truth. I'm a dark heart. You're a... You're, you're a master of dark arts, so I guess I'm your minion. What are we dealing with here, Dark Lord? Uh, we're conspiracy analysts, is what we are, as Gore Vidal used to say. Alex, uh, I'm in New York City, uh, kind of in the bunker, uh, bearing uh, some of the grassroots support for Donald Trump uh, at this debate. Uh, and I've got to tell you, I've been putting in long hours. Uh, if it was not for brain force, uh, I really, uh, it, which really has given me an enormous amount of clarity and energy. Now, you didn't pay me to say that. Uh, I didn't tell you I was going to say it. It's merely a fact. Uh, so, well, thank uh, you. I saw you on the road at the RNC with big bottles of it. It is the best nootropic, the healthiest brain booster out there. So thanks for the plug, Roger Stone. Well, look, I, I've been into alternative medicine, Eastern-based medicine, for many years. The Chinese, even the Egyptians, knew more about the healing qualities of herbs and the uh, and the importance of vitamins. Uh, so uh, I know they try to make use it to make us sound like we're odd, but they're the ones. Hey, uh, hang that albatross around our necks. We love it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm uh, feeling very confident going into this debate because uh, the Donald Trump that I have known for 40 years is an instinctual fighter. In instinctual. fact, I was reading, he's not even doing pre, uh, the AP reports pre-debate. He is going to rise the occasion. There are some inside his camp who have tried to press him into these mock debates where somebody plays Hillary uh, and Donald would play himself. Now, Gerald Posner actually sent me an email offering to put on a size 16 pantsuit and play Hillary if Trump wanted him. That's not Trump's style. So you've been offered to play Hillary already? Uh, well, this gentleman volunteered, uh, the famous author of, uh, of the book, um, Case Closed, yes. bolster the Warren Commission, an attorney, a wily debater. Uh, he's wrong, of course, at least on that issue. But Alex, I commend you his books on Saudi influence in the United States politics and the early dangers of Al-Qaeda, uh, on which his books are on the money. Boy, Trump sure destroyed Hillary when he said it was a bombing in New York, and then it was a bombing in New York, and then for two, three days she said it wasn't a bombing, and then now we've got another Islamist uh, attack out in Seattle. It seems like the stars are lining up against Hillary. Well, I think she carries a lot of baggage into the debate. The point, of course, is that Trump is not going to do the formal kind of mock debating, nobody's going to play him, not Gerald Posner, not Laura Ingram, not anybody. He is, uh, he has his own way of preparing. So yes, people who ask me, is he prepared? Yes, in his own way. He's thinking, he's taking notes. Once in a while he asks people questions. He doesn't tell you what he thinks of your answer. He's got a wide cross section of very smart friends. But at the end of the day, there's only one Trump advisor that matters. That's Donald Trump. No one can put words in his mouth. The idea of remembering a zinger, uh, he just doesn't work that way. Now, Roger Ailes, who is, to my mind, one of the smartest guys ever in television, and who's a longtime friend of Donald's, uh, who has no formal capacity uh, in the campaign, did, however, tell Donald uh, advice that he gave Ronald Reagan, the same advice I gave Ronald Reagan, the same advice I would give Mr. Trump, but I don't like to divulge our personal conversations, 
that he should be thematic, stick to the big picture. You don't need to know how many freighters are in our naval force or the name of every sub-chief of a tribe in Africa. You just need to stick to the general themes. You may remember when Reagan debated Mondale, and he was prepared for his debate by Dick Darman from Harvard, former Elliot Richardson Ray, aide, and Jim Baker, they tried to cram Reagan's head with facts and figures and statistics. Nancy Reagan later said they brutalized her husband. It was the only debate in his long political career that he lost. So it is with Trump. He will win this debate his way. Well, obviously, he's somebody that nobody would want to debate on his feet if he's himself. What about Hillary, though? I mean, she can't be out in public more than 10, 15 minutes. She's been missing for a week. She's with weird blue screens behind her, coughing and choking on TV when she does show up for a few minutes. Her eyes are pointing different directions. I'm not being mean. She looks like a cancer patient. Uh, what is she going to do? I mean, I don't think, quite frankly, I don't think she can show up and do 90 minutes with no break. Well, uh, in negotiations, I can tell you it was Trump who insisted on standing. Her aides preferred being seated. It was Trump who insisted 90 minutes, no long bathroom breaks, no uh, uh, no uh, commercial interruptions. So uh, it, it really, uh, Trump has gotten a format that I think is beneficial. That's my next question. This is a godsend. How did this happen? Everything's been rigged against him. How suddenly did the gods of manna open up the sky and he gets exactly what makes sense? Well, I wouldn't go quite that far. Uh, there is a woman on this uh, moderating uh, uh, list who uh, she doesn't have the first debate, but I believe she has the last. So and they've Obama, got some knives and daggers and things hidden. Obama attended this woman's wedding. Uh, she's a good friend of the Clinton. So I don't know who agreed to these set of moderators. I note that Donald Trump came out the other day and said no moderators. Lincoln versus Douglas. Exactly. So Biggest debates of all time. But still, it's still, it's a bigger challenge than that so-called, you know, uh, commander-in-chief debate a few weeks ago that was just 30 minutes with her, 30 minutes with him. And which, indisputably, she has some kind of earpiece. Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. However, she just told the FBI recently that she can't remember anything. And she's got all. this black Secret Service agent jumping up saying, keep going, just act calm, everything's fine. Right. So, uh, you know, I've seen video of her falling off the back of the stage. I mean, this uh, she is uh, she's doing practice. Roger, balls. we're about to go to break, but let me ask you this. In your gut, do you think she shows up, and if she does, does she have a coughing fit, or does she collapse? Uh, all right, when we return. And again, we want to plug the websites that carry both your books, the... Uh, the uh, uh, Clinton's War on Women, the Bush Crime Family, Infowarstore.com. Can Hillary Clinton, I mean this, because quite frankly, I want this to happen tomorrow night. I want Trump to destroy her. Now, this is a serial criminal. I just can't wait to see it. But but I am absolutely questioning myself right now. You know, uh, will she show up? I don't think she can. I mean, she's been gone for a week. If she does, what are the bets? Coughing fit, 90%. Falling down, 30 40%. I mean... Having to hang on the podium, but but will that be her victimhood? In the new America, will it be if she, like, craps her diapers, her adult diapers? Will that be read by the Democrats as the new tea leaves, the new portent to worship? Roger Stone from StoneColdTruth.com straight ahead. And the empire is corporate crony capitalists that are anti-free market, that work with different forms of authoritarianism. Our guest is going to be with us till 45 after. The last segment, we're going to have purely to cover news with Liam McAdoo, but she's here riding shotgun with us right now through this segment and the next. Pop it any time, Liam. We've got two more segments with Roger Stone. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., I'll be live on the air. And then we've got the coverage of the debate an hour before. I'm actually licensing the debate, so I'll be carrying it live for an hour and a half. And then two hours after, so I want to invite Roger, who's obviously a busy guy, uh, to pop in during or after the debate tomorrow. But, Roger, I mean... I I'm on the edge of my seat at a level I've never been before. Obviously, you're the former head of the Trump campaign, his friend for a long time, been advising, doing a great job. But I see the power structure in total panic. Ted Cruz being forced to endorse 
uh, the neocons basically falling, the Republican establishment dying. Uh, we've got inside videos on InfoWars of Democratic Party leaders saying, we like Trump, the Democrats we know all like Trump. Talk about a landslide. I don't want to be overconfident here, but it looks like that, as I said earlier, the stars are aligned against Hillary Clinton. Roger Stone. Well, Alex, if you want evidence that Donald Trump is about to win, merely look at the endorsement of him by Ted Cruz. This guy is a weasel who knifed Donald Trump in the back at the Republican National Convention, Nelson Rockefeller style. But now he's, just, he's figured out that there is an avalanche coming. There's a tidal wave of reform coming as angry Americans uh, storm the polls. There is, in fact, I think, a small but significant hidden vote in that it is not socially cool to be for Donald Trump. Uh, on the other hand, anyone who's seen Hillary attempt to dance should realize that this is the least cool candidate of all time. So the Republican establishment is panicking. They're on the wrong side of history. How do they counter strike? What do they do now? Well, I think they're kind of running out of options. Trump's uh, gains most recently in the polls, Alex, were largely Republicans coming home meaning they are deserting their neocon leaders because the Republican establishment always pretends to be conservative. Exactly. I shot a video yesterday that's gone viral that I say Ted Cruz endorse of Trump marks the end of Glenn Beck and the Republican establishment. Well, uh, in essence, yes, uh, it is. He's obviously trying to uh, save his political career. By the way, I am hopeful that Former Governor Barry will choose to challenge the globalist Bush boy, uh, uh, Ted Cruz, who's, as you know, Alex, his campaign underwritten secretly by Wall Street, enormous, suspicious loans that he never reported. Exactly. Let's be clear. We, we're not mad at him in a pissing contest because he tried to defeat Trump. It's that he's a Judas Iscariot, a Benedict Arnold. He was always a fake. We know he'll turn against us in the future. That's why Cruz... And Beck must be basically marked out here. Yes, uh, I mean, Ted Cruz is a Quislin. His wife is in the Council on Foreign Relations. I rest my case. Let's move on. Exactly, so, Goldman Sachs. But it, but it shows a collapse in confidence for Hillary. So, so what comes next? Well, uh, as I have discussed, there are a number of options available to them. The most obvious ones is, one is to steal this election. Uh, now, uh, the Democrats try to dismiss this, and they try to distract us into believing that voter fraud is the only issue and that that is non-existent. Well, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. It's widely uh, practiced in the Democratic machines. Fox News the other night had an excellent series on people who voted in two states in the same year. So uh, it most certainly exists. Uh, but I'm more concerned, as you know, with vote rigging. Look what Trump has said. These elections are rigged. We have established uh, by a Stanford study that shows it was done to Bernie Sanders that these machines are easily rigged for a desired result. So that's the big problem. And, and, and we see Hillary in these weird, where she's actually like a whole new person babbling, saying, why ain't I going to win 50 points? She seems to be melting down. So... I guess she's betting everything on election fraud. Well, uh, again, 45 days is an eternity in politics. Then we certainly know the trajectory of this race. Trump is gaining now two points down in Pennsylvania. Extraordinary. This is their stronghold. The Philadelphia machine, of course, is famous for election fraud and non-existent and dead voters. Here's a trivia question for you, Alex. What state has more dead people on the state voter rolls than any other? Why it's the Keystone State. This is Armageddon. The reason Trump is gaining here is because he has an appeal in western Pennsylvania that no Republican has ever had before. That's right. They say he's either ahead or in a dead heat or three points behind in Pennsylvania in a bunch of different polls. What does that mean? Well, uh, essentially... Uh, there are white, patriotic, God-fearing, tax-paying Democrats who are most likely union members in western Pennsylvania. It is a stronghold for the unions. 
And these Americans are rejecting Hillary. They voted for Obama. They voted for Hillary's husband. But they are not. They are now voting for Donald Trump. This, in a way, offsets the huge loss he's going to get in the city of Philadelphia. He's going to come out of there 750,000 votes down, perhaps more. The machine does its job. The counties around Philadelphia, once reliably Republican, are now really purple. They're well, well, what about the Google poll they admittedly did where she was 20-something points ahead, now she's only five points ahead. That's what really panicked her. And two days after that, she went to D.C. to give a speech. I mean, if she can't win D.C., my God. Yeah, uh, look, uh, she's Trump now ahead in Ohio. Despite the fact that the Kasich machine and the state Republicans are doing everything humanly possible to undermine the campaign. Sure, so what about the chairman of the Joint Chiefs saying in Congress yesterday, or, or Friday, two days ago, he's been ordered to attack Russia, and he doesn't think it's a good idea. I mean, he's been ordered by Obama to start World War III. I played the clip earlier. I mean, I can't believe I'm reading these headlines. This is, I played the clip. I mean, it seems like, what will they pull? A war? A economic collapse? A race war? No, wait a minute. Hold on. Isn't it Trump who's in bed with, with the Russians? This, uh, this uh, line of attack needs to be addressed. Dianne Feinstein, a tired old Democratic hack who's been in the Senate a long time and whose husband has made millions in sweetheart federal questionable deals, is calling for an investigation into Trump's uh, business affairs in Russia or with Russians, of which he has none. Big headline. Sure, but meanwhile, Obama is ordering an attack on Russian forces. This is mainstream news. Yeah, I mean, it, it just shows you how craven and disingenuous it is. They, yeah, they can't win an election. Here's they're going to start World War III. Arrest these people. I think that they will do just about anything they can get away so with. So that's my question. We're going to break, coming back with you in closing. What are they going to pull? Roger Stone, the, you know, the consummate political insider, not the insider like he's an establishment, but the guy that knows what's going on. Roger always gives us what he really thinks. You know, for over a year, he's saying Trump's behind. Oh, my God, I'm so worried. Now he says Trump's way ahead, which is clearly he is. What do they pull? I mean, they're trying to start wars, economic collapse, race riots, George Soros, hundreds of millions to start race riots. What happens? Roger Stone will ask you with Leanne McAdoo. Straight ahead on Alex Jones. All right, Leanne McAdoo is here, one of our great reporters. She'll be co-hosting with myself tomorrow night during the pre-debate, debate, and after debate. Roger Stone, former head of the Trump campaign, confidant, will be joining us uh, in the post-debate after 9.30 Central, 10.30 Eastern. Uh, but Leanne, it's funny. You were wanting to bring up a subject when you called me yesterday and said, hey, I want to come on the show Sunday, which you're always welcome to do. I always say, hey, come on when you want to come on. You wanted to bring up Jennifer Flowers and the genius of Trump coming out and saying, oh, you want to bring Mark Cuban to put in the front stage? I'll bring somebody that he settled a sex case with, Jennifer Flowers. So mm -hmm. it's funny. Then Stone, during the break, wants to bring this up. So you're on the same page. Right. You go ahead and lead this interview with Roger Stone. Right. And, and now even, of course, as the, the media coming out today saying, well, now the Trump camp is backpedaling. They're not going to have Jennifer Flowers. She's not there. He, he tweeted, perhaps I'll have her in the front row. She says she wants to come. She said right away. She's like, I'll be there. I'm, I would love to be your VIP guest. Better but look at the Mark Cuban. What I thought was so genius about it, and this is just the genius of how Trump can control the media and control the narrative, is even if she never does show up to become his guest, it forced the media to have to report on just who Jennifer Flowers is because there's so many young people under 30 who have no idea who Jennifer Flowers is. They don't believe uh, all the stories about Bill Clinton or, you know, what what people have been bringing up. So and they're one of the largest voting blocks now. They don't so, know about what a predator to this guy is exactly. or I stole the Haitian money. Roger Stone. Yeah, uh, this is exactly right. First of all, uh, the prelude to a debate is somewhat like the prelude to a prize fight. You're supposed to psych out and taunt your opponent. This is the genius of Trump. He didn't say he was inviting her. He said perhaps he was inviting her. Now, the Clinton campaign said they were inviting Mark Cuban, a man who made all of his money in a Federal Reserve created boom in which most Americans lost billions. So I imagine that Mr. Cuban wants Hillary's loose Fed policies so he can continue to be a pirate. 
He sold his company to Yahoo for a year. How pathetic is he wanting to join the campaign to be a VP a year ago, now butthurt? I mean, is he really just lusting after Donald Trump? Is this kind of a latent gay worship thing? Uh, look, uh, he and Trump have had a have not been close friends, but he went from mildly kind of saying, "Well, you got to give the guy credit," to now being the attack dog. So he's a spurned. He, he's a spurned latent, and there's nothing wrong with being gay. He's well, just, yeah, because didn't Mark Cuban open up his stadium to him at the last minute for his huge crowds that Trump had in the last minute? So Cuban's got a crush on him and is spurned. Well, it's worse than that. This poor bastard goes out and defends the Clinton Foundation. They push him out to say, oh, no, it's a great charity. It's like that jackass, uh, James Carville. The people will die if they go out of business. No, people have already died because they're in business. Uh, Black Lives Matter, unless you live in Haiti, unless you live in Libya or any place else that the Clintons wish to. Were they, were they, were they only gave 5.7% of the money they gave? Right, uh, they only wanted to get in there because they wanted to steal the resources. Uh, and absolutely. Exploit. What's interesting here, and I can I can tell you this, is, is that immediately after Trump posted this, uh, Dolly Kyle contacted me. Uh, someone who had spoken to Juanita Broderick contacted me. Uh, so a Paula Jones representative uh, contacted me, and they were all willing to come to the debate or do anything else to let people know on behalf of Donald Trump. The way Hillary Clinton has led the attack on women. Bill Clinton is a sexual predator who has abused women. This is about violence against women. Hillary has covered it up, and therefore she is complicit in it. And these women are all more credible than Hillary Clinton. Right. Now, you know what I'm curious about, Mr. Stone? What do you think about the fact that Fox News had an article up yesterday talking about Bill Clinton being on uh, Epstein's plane, and they actually released the the plane log there, showing how many times Bill Clinton. What the pedo plane? Yes, uh, off the, the orgy. The admitted island, child rape plane. Off the orgy island, like how? Yeah, insane. why is Clinton on the pedophile plane? Now all of a sudden they're reporting on it. First of all, uh, with all due respect to the New York Times, Nick Bryant broke the story for Gawker. He had it all. There's not a morsel of news in the Times story today that doesn't tell us what Brian or your poll. He is uh, not a conservative, not a Republican, and one of the greatest investigative reporters living today. No, you're right. Gawker did break him. Uh, so, uh, and uh, Mr. Epstein gave money to the Clinton Foundation. It has not only never been returned, but it mysteriously disappeared from their voluntary website. Oh. So, you know, and we, we know that Clinton visited the hedonistic Orgy Island uh, that Epstein. So, what does this mean? He's blackmailed? He's compromised? Well, it's very hard to say. The rumor has always been that Epstein, a billionaire hedge fund manager, financial genius, uh, had video of Bill. Anything is possible in this murky world. Yeah. We do know that he was given a slap on the wrist uh, by yeah. both Democrats in Florida and the Republicans in Washington. All right, Stone, let me ask you this, because you're going to be on with us tomorrow night. Uh, StoneColdTruth.com, carry both your books, InfoWarsStore.com, and your Bill Clinton rape shirt. It's so important to wear that, expose what's happening. What else is on your radar? What else are you looking for? What else are you concerned about? Then Leanne, jump in with, with, with what else you're concerned about. Well, well uh, you have the entire question of, uh, of the uh, – decree consent that the Republicans foolishly signed in 1982, which essentially prevents many of the stop the steal activities that we have been looking at, uh, potentially uh, leading the way to an enormous legal battle. If the polls are unattended, if only the watchers for the federal government and the watchers for the Democratic Party are watching the polls. And how naked is that? First we bring it up, Trump brings it up, it doesn't exist. Now, oh, we got to have the UN come in and the Justice Department run everything, and that's pretty clear. What a joke. Yes, uh, I think that's, uh, it, it is uh, one of the dangers. I have said many times on this show, and I repeat it, that I fear for Trump's physical safety. Uh, it's not something I want to belabor, but uh, it, it is, uh, he is leading a revolution, and he is 
threatening. Sure, so election fraud, Trump assassination, uh, big war, October surprise. What about a fake attempted assassination on Hillary? Uh, you know, I, that, I, look, the globalists are, are, will do anything. They killed John Kennedy. They infiltrated the Watergate burglar teams to botch the mission and bring Nixon down. They... They uh, lied about health care. They lied about war in Libya. So the sky's the limit. The next 40-something hey. days is an epic time to be alive. Uh, Muammar Gaddafi had gr agreed to abdicate and had given, uh, in three different negotiations, everything Hillary's State Department wanted. Everything. We still spent a billion dollars bombing that country, killing black people, and deposing a guy who was sharing his intelligence with us. Who had renounced well said, his, well said. You're back with us tomorrow after the debate at 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central. Lee, and final comment. We're going to come back with you after uh, Roger Stone leaves us, but final question for, for him. Well, we see they're already planning World War III behind the scenes. This might be the October surprise that we're all going to get nuked before anyone gets into office. Trump's already said he is running on diplomacy, not destruction. Meanwhile, we know Hillary Clinton's just going to get in there, and if she gets in, she's going to take out another player on the So are you the saying, what is the October surprise? or Yeah, what? I mean, it's like, what is Trump's plan? Roger, what is the October supplies, or, or how will Trump counter this? Uh, if I reveal... Uh, you know, surprises that could come in October, I would be telegraphing punches. Uh, this is going to be a very close, very hard-fought campaign. Well, you got the, some gigantic juicies that you promised to at least, <laughs> in near time, give us one of the exclusives, others exclusives, but we're going to have some exclusives right here, right, Little sweetie? Giblets. Well, I, I think that's a high uh, probability. There's a lot uh, to play out yet. The WikiLeaks are going to be significant. The debates are going to be significant. It's one hell of a time to be alive, and if you go to the stonecoldtruth.com, you'll find it all. Roger Stone will talk to you tomorrow night, 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central, during the post-debate coverage. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. Yeah, good to be here. This is a hell of a time to be alive at InfoWars.com. And believe it, we are the tip of the spear. That ain't hype. We are it, baby. Stay with us. Leanne's coming up.